flash. Hello, Flash Dagger here. This week I'm making a video I'd hoped to never have to make, but it's exceptionally important I do make it, and it's exceptionally important that you, if you're someone who's trying to improve in this game, if you're someone who's ever thought, I don't know how these guys get the speed out of the corners, you need to watch this because you could also be affected by this problem. So without further ado, let's have a little look and see how Key found out exactly the problem I was having. Oh, Flash, why? It flashed lag then? What was that? What was that? That must have been lag or some. Flash! What are we doing? <laughs> flash! What? What's going on? Is Flash disconnecting? Has he disconnected? I don't know what's going on. So as you can clearly see, <laughs> I've brake checked Key essentially. He's going to the back of me. Um, in the corner. He's got a two second penalty. I've tried to let him through. He doesn't know what's happened. Um, but he's being pretty cool about it, and I know exactly what's happened, which is why I let him through immediately. He wasn't at fault, it was 100% on me. So here's a few examples to see, can you identify what's going on? Pay close attention to everything and see if you can guess what exactly that issue is. So we're coming through again, same corner, heavy braking zone, into the apex. Can you see it? Can you guess what it is? One more time, different different example, that one was more severe. Here is another example from a race with other drivers around us. Keep an eye on that delta, it's eight and a half tenths before the braking zone. And now as you can see, it's down to one tenth, we've lost three quarters of a second in one corner. So what exactly is going wrong? Well, Key and his chat were trying to figure out what exactly had happened. Was it lag? You know, was it a steering issue? Was it a disconnect? What had happened? And Key and I believe it was Rob and Team BMW identified they thought it might have been the pedals. And I also believed it was the pedals breaking involuntarily. Now, I had heard of brake flicker happening on occasions with a dirty sensor, but not the brakes applying themselves full force through a corner. Now, for anyone, your worst nightmare is having an incident with a streamer with between three and 500 people watching. And to have an excuse, your only excuse being the brakes applied themselves, sounds like absolute BS. So it was up to me, without any conclusive evidence, only a hypothesis, to actually go and prove that this was the case, and that's what I set out to do. So with that said, I set about to set up my tripod and camera, and film my pedals from above, in sync with the actual driving inputs. And the reason for this was, you're not looking at your braking inputs. You know, whenever you go around, you feel something's wrong, but you haven't been consciously looking at the brake, braking inputs on screen while you're braking. You're thinking to yourself, did I brake? Did I do that? Did I not do that? The only way to actually identify was this happening was to sync up what I was doing with the brake pedals with the braking inputs themselves. And now you will see I've actually went this far as to identify in parallel with the braking inputs on the screen, what is the corresponding distance traveled off the pedal? And you'll be able to see 0%, 5%, because that's my dead zone for the, to allow for the weight of my foot to rest in the pedal. So there's no inputs at that percentage. 50% and 100%. Now you might be thinking, those don't look like linear gaps. That's because this is a load cell. Okay, it's based upon pressure, not distance traveled. This is just representative, and it isn't in a linear fashion like a potentiometer pedal, for example, which is based upon distance traveled. So this is more of a reference point for you so you can gauge in your mind where the pedal is at and what the reflective braking inputs on screen should be. So we're gonna go through a couple of examples of corners where this was in effect in this test session. Firstly at full speed, then slow down to look at the inputs on screen versus what the pedals are doing.
Did you catch that? One more time and we'll slow it right the way down. So on the full brakes, the pedal's fully in. Coming off the brakes now to turn in and trail brake. So we're now off the brakes, no inputs. And as you can see there, foot is fully off the brakes. The brake inputs went in and burnt off about 10 miles per hour of speed, which is why we've lost the guts of seven or eight tenths from that ghost. Now the next example is actually even worse and I only caught this after slowing it down and having experienced this in another race elsewhere. So keep an eye on everything that's happening and the adjustments that have to be made. So I know that was very quick, but if you caught it, and you'll see now, not only did the brakes apply themselves, but the brake inputs actually went to zero, even though I still had some inputs in. So you can see here on the brakes fully, I'm coming off the brakes, it's a trail brake into the corner, burning off the speed, but I'm still on the brakes and it's given me zero brake and inputs. That's now gonna force me to actually come back onto the brakes gradually to burn off more speed. I've missed the apex, I'm now off them again, right? Fully off the brakes and now you can see there's 100% brake inputs. So I've actually been impacted both ways there by braking when I didn't want it to brake and by not braking when I did. Now as a replay, both those corners again at full speed in the background, I'm going to cover a couple of points I alluded to earlier on and that was this issue is a lot more common than you would think and the second is that the issue itself is harder to identify the slower a driver you are. So firstly, about how common this is. Well, as you can see on the screen now, I stream, you know, I'm a relatively smaller creator, roughly 30 to 35 viewers per stream. Let's break it in the middle, say 33. Well, not just myself, but one of my viewers, Nibbleye, also had the exact same issue, exactly the same, where it impacted him in heavy braking zones in the slower corners after a long straight. So that's basically two out of, let's say, 32 people, or one in 16. That breaks down to one person almost in every lobby. Now, I appreciate it's not the largest cross-section, but it's indicative that it's not just isolated to me. So that's why it's a concern that it's, it's a lot more common than you think. Secondly, about how this impacts drivers who are, let's say, at the earlier stages of their, their journey in terms of upskilling themselves and developing as drivers. And that comes down to how difficult this is to identify. I was personally driving with this issue for three weeks, and I'll be quite honest, um, I wasn't gonna blame my pedals, I wasn't gonna blame my equipment, and I'm driving at a roughly 70k DR, so I have a fairly competent, fairly competent approach to how to take corners. Not perfect, but competent, and I was reluctant to blame anything but myself. And that is approaching corners, breaking in a straight line, coasting in, using the trail braking to hit the apex if necessary, but let the least amount of braking the better. Now, if, if you're at the earlier stages of your driving, you're going to have a lot less confidence um, with doing that in a single motion. You will be on the brakes, you'll be adjusting your brakes, you'll be missing your apex, readjusting on the throttle exit in the corners, realizing that you're going to understeer off. I'm sure you've done that before, where you've come off the brakes after accelerating out because you think you're going to drive off the track and then you brake a little bit more. So the point I'm making there is, is that the inputs and from the braking, the accelerating, the throttles, it's not consistent, which will disguise this issue a lot more. And if you're already a slower driver and your confidence is already low that you're not quite as fast as, let's say, a, a top 10 ghost that you're chasing, then you're even less likely to blame your equipment when in actual fact, the equipment could be what's holding you back. Now, it's not going to be common, but it does exist. So it's important for you to be able to identify and know how to test this. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So we're just in the main Gran Turismo 7 homepage. We're going to go to the menu. We're going to drop down to options and then go across to controllers and then in the top right hand side it's going to be your controller settings and we're going to test the pedal so at this stage i'm really just braking as i would in the race heavy braking and then coming off the brakes and find that angle which is triggering it and this for me 
is around about 6%. You'll see once it hits around about somewhere between 5 to 7%, it hits a specific percentage and it starts going crazy. So therefore, I obviously have an issue where my brakes are doing things I don't want them to do. So I know this isn't probably the most entertaining of videos, uh, not like I like to do, but I think it's a very important video. Hopefully you've gained something from it. If you have and it's been beneficial for you or you've learned something, really appreciate hitting the like button or consider subscribing. So whenever I do get back to streaming and making these videos, you'll get the notifications and I hope to see you then. Take care.